In this video mini series, I'm going to do a deep dive into Zilliqa and assess whether Zilliqa is a good investment in the long term. Popular blockchain networks such as Bitcoin and Ethereum are suffering from slow transaction speeds and also very expensive transaction fees. In fact, as of February 2021, the average transaction fee for Bitcoin is about 1425 USD per transfer. Since then, there are many cryptocurrency startups created to solve this scalability issue. Zilliqa is one of them. Using its own unique sharding technology, Zilliqa believes it can finally solve the scalability problem that has prevented many mainstream or traditional companies from testing the water with blockchain technology. In a simple way, the blockchain network needs to achieve consensus among all the participating nodes. So, in order to verify one transaction, the participating nodes have to agree that it is indeed a valid transaction. That is why it is called decentralization. So no one centralized power can just say something, and everybody else is forced to believe in it. The bigger the network is, the harder it is to achieve consensus. The analogy is like you are with four family members versus if you are with hundreds of other people. It will be easy to achieve an agreement with your family members, isn't it? But imagine if the same agreement has to be made among hundreds of people. Obviously, it will be much harder. Many newer blockchain platforms try to solve scalability problems by introducing different consensus algorithms, especially delegated proof of stake. These representatives will verify all the transactions in the blockchain. And then there's Zilliqa. The core team of Zilliqa understood this exact problem with blockchain scalability. And of course, they don't want a simple fix like using DPoS consensus and ignore the core of the scalability problem itself. Zilliqa's idea is to use sharding technology. The concept of Zilliqa's sharding is to break down the nodes every 600 nodes. This breaking down process is called sharding. So, when there are 1,200 nodes, we get two shards. And when there are 1,800 nodes, we get three shards, and so on and so forth. Each shard will have to process a certain part of the blockchain transactions. To give you an idea of how it is going to work, I will give you an example. Imagine when there are six shards in total, each of these shards will have to process one sixth of the blockchain transactions in the form of micro blocks. Continue watching at part 2.